Yeah. You want to open the back door? <laughs> Prompt it. Open with something. Just so it doesn't interfere with the food. All right. Thank you for coming. Thank you for the great turnout today. Um, how many of you have been to the, who, uh, actually the opposite question, how many is this first time on the Entrepreneur's Farm? Good. Thank you. And hope you'll come again. Uh, so what we do this uh, typically is every two weeks we have a, a session. Uh, uh, sometimes we have food, other times we're not. Thank you this time to the uh, Office of uh, Graduate and Postgraduate uh, Postdoc Support that provided the pizza. Uh, I provided some extra things for those of you who uh, we use the sushi and so on, and then also the after after we do the networking, don't forget dessert. We'll put out some dessert out there. So, um, and uh, so we do this biweekly. Uh, so the next one coming up on March fifth uh, to Mark, especially for those of you who are uh, innovators on campus, disclosing your invention and what happens next. So the tech transfer office will do a session on how to disclose your invention, how to do your record of invention, and, and then what happens next in that process. Um, and then we'll be dark the following two, uh, in that uh, mid-March time frame because that will be kind of during the break time. And then we'll, we'll start up again in, in April, April 2nd specifically, we'll have Greg Weiss, uh, one of our faculty. And when we do the faculty, we do it uh, in an interview, we choose a faculty innovator, somebody that has been kind of doing innovation and entrepreneurship, and then we'll do it in the style of, of a inside the actor studio kind of style. So. So look, look for that uh, April 2nd. Um, uh, there will be some other programs. And also I want to, before, before I uh, make an announcement, um, I want to make sure that you know, there's a number of, of, of activities uh, that Octane does, as well as other things that are on campus that I want to call your attention to. Uh, specifically, actually, uh, in the School of Engineering, we have Henry Samueli coming up and speaking on March 4th. Uh, Bill Link, who's the co-founder of Verson Ventures, coming to speak on uh, next Thursday, uh, February 25th. And then we have an entrepreneur who created her own civil engineering uh, consulting firm uh, coming to speak uh, next Tuesday. So uh, information on that is outside. Um, I do want to point out that today's session is being videotaped, so it will be available on OpenCourseWare. Uh, our campus is part of the OpenCourseWare network. Uh, which includes uh, uh, many other universities, including MIT, which actually started that, uh, that process. And so there's a number of, of kind of high quality education materials that you can find on there uh, uh, as courses that you can avail yourself through that open courseware uh, uh, network. So I urge you to check it out, uh, 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 the Open Courseware Consortium. Uh, you can just Google and I think there's information out there or it's OC. Uh, wconsortium.org. Uh, um, so look for this course as well as a number of other courses uh, that, that uh, our uh, UCI extension has put together there. So with that, we'll uh, get right into today's presentation, which will be about relationship building and business networking. Uh, Charlie Becker, who is the director of the Don Beale Center for Innovation and Entrepreneurship, is going to uh, start uh, describing some of the important factors and why you should be considering a uh, more organized uh, method of doing uh, networking and, and business, uh, uh, business connect connections. And then I'll uh, uh, get into some of the practicalities. And then following that, we'll actually have an exercise for all of you to do a little bit of structured networking. So with that, please, Charlie. Great. Well, thanks, Gorin. Uh, well, let me introduce myself. My name is Charlie Becker. I'm Administrative Director for the Don Beale Center for Innovation and Entrepreneurship here on campus. And uh, uh, so kind of the first issue is, well, why should you uh, be interested in what Charlie Becker has to say and, and Gorin Matsyachevich has to say? Uh, so I just want to qualify myself with respect to this subject area. Uh, I spent 25 years in uh, private industry, primarily in sales and marketing, and uh, attended many, many networking events, uh, both at an industry level and academic level, and uh, basically made my living doing exactly what we're talking about today. 
Uh, it goes with that saying that uh, when you're in sales and marketing, you have to find plenty of customers to talk to, and that's called your pipeline. And so filling that pipeline is, is a matter of uh, fine art for sales and marketing people. So uh, after doing that for 25 years and then here working at the university with the Don Beale Center for five years, we service about 1,000 uh, students here on campus who are interested in thinking about planning and act actually executing a business. And so keeping track of those 1,000 students and their interests is uh, kind of a, a consuming passion for me. And so uh, we, uh, in order to service our students, have a number of events, in, including the Matrix Mixer event, which is, uh, I think, probably the, the premier mixer event here on campus that uh, we uh, encourage our students and, and faculty come to. So, so we have some uh, experience doing this. And then I, I have to brag on uh, for the for uh, uh, Goran here. Goran, in my experience, is a consummate networker. This guy, when he's presenting, you really want to uh, listen to what he has to say because there's virtually nothing that occurs, on, in my experience, on this campus of significance that, that Goran does not know about. And there's probably very few people on this campus that either don't know Goran or movers and shakers on this campus that, that Goran does not know of. And so... Um, I, I want to assure you that uh, today you're here, you will hear from the master of how to implement, uh, think about and implement uh, social networking. So now that I've put the, the bar height so high for you, Gorn, I'm going to challenge you to jump over. So as Gorn basically said, and, and we now have a color feature on, on this one. <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about why uh, you should care about business networking. Uh, the, the old kind of uh, euphemism for this is called grip and grin. So you, you grip and you grin. And, and so, you know, that's kind of sort of a tired old cliche of, of those of us that do a lot of social networking. But uh, I want to share with you initially sort of a theoretical uh, scientific justification for why we as humans uh, organize ourselves in certain ways and sort of the commonality of, of some features uh, of relationship building that you really need to know about in order to be effective in it. So, so since this is an academic uh, crowd, I, I, uh, I thought you'd be interested in this. And so we'll spend a little bit uh, talking about interpersonal ties and information flow, uh, and then uh, how, how to leverage that, and then we'll move into uh, innovation and role networking, which uh, Goran will handle and talk about, okay, well, so now that we know the theory, how do we actually practice social networking, how do we build robust and powerful networks. And then we're going, as Goran mentioned, we'll move into uh, practical tips and, and some practice exercises. So but our goal is to enable you, by the time that uh, 1240 rounds or, or rolls around, you guys are going to be experts in, in social networking. You're going to be empowered to go out and create uh, powerful, compelling, and useful networks by the end, end of this session. So. Uh, intuitively, all of us know that relationships are important. Uh, poets and philosophers have talked about this for the ages, so th this is nothing new. But uh, relationships not only define us in terms of the groups that we're affiliated with, but they're actually avenues towards very powerful enabling ideas uh, that travel through society. And it turns out that relationships uh, bind us together in terms of how information flows and if, you, and if information is power, then uh, your relationship network, it becomes your in, empowering and enabling uh, uh, network for, for, for you. So, so your access to novel information, that information that differentiates you from the rest of the pack, that information that creates special value in, in what you bring to the party, is determined by a unique mix of what is called a weak and strong interpersonal ties. And so we'll, we'll go through this in the next slide. Uh, but one of the tenets of social networking theory is that there's this uh, unique kind of formulation of how um, the combination of weak and strong interpersonal ties in empower you. So there's a, a good history of this um, going back as early as the er early 1800s. Goethe talked about uh, social and interpersonal ties as having sort of a, a rough affinity uh, or similarity to uh, chemical relationships uh, and chemical bonds. 
But in 1954, a Russian Anatole Rappaport actually investigated this, and uh, he spent a lot of time talking about what we sort of all know, that acquainted individuals uh, share a lot of information, and, and new information is actually uh, derived from relationships from people outside our immediate group. And so this, this observation became one of the cornerstones of, of networking theory. And then in 1973, Mark Granovetter actually wrote a paper called uh, The Strength of Weak Ties, which mathematically and formally uh, established this, this relationship that really what is important in social networking is, is not that half a dozen or a dozen people that we hold close to, to, to our everyday activities, which we call strong ties, but it's actually those relationships that you establish uh, with, with uh, weak ties to groups that you may only talk to every couple weeks or every month or every quarter. So what's con uh, important in social networking are what we call these structural holes. So you may think of you know, the people in your dorm, the people in your research group, the people in your department as having these strong ties. And uh, as Rappaport established, basically in, in these groups that we interact with every day, uh, all of our information is fairly well known uh, uh, among us. And there's nothing really novel because we talk so much. So, so important novel information that serves to uh, differentiate you from, from other people is information that's in other groups. And such social networking theory says that important novel information doesn't really travel around in these groups. It's, it's established by these weak uh, ties. So that's kind of the theory. And uh, so the way it manifests itself is that when you go to a social uh, or to uh, an event where you can meet other people, uh, the strategy that you want to implement are these bridges to uh, various other networks. And, uh, and so the way you do that is you don't simply just start uh, creating a bunch of, of uh, relationships. So the, the hard way that you establish social networks is that you undertake to create some number of parallel relationships, all sort of, uh, and then you, you um, if, if the hard way of doing it is, is trying to support all these different relationships simultaneously. The easy way you do this is you establish these weak ties between other groups. So in, in your social networking activities, you should undertake uh, to listen to the people that you meet and understand what their passion is and what their interrelatedness is and establish whether that person is a key member of a group that you're interested in. And then you establish that weak link between those individuals and then you follow up on a periodic basis with them. And you don't, so they're not part of your strong relationship ties. They're part of your weak uh, relationship ties. So within the Mirage School, we've, this is uh, closely held and uh, cherished information. So uh, what we did is we networked uh, graphically uh, one of our management classes and at the Mirage School were organized in groups. So uh, just graphically, this was kind of an exercise that we took with some software uh, in, in social networking theory. But you can see that uh, we have these strong ties between individual groups, and then weak ties all over. So, so business students, by their very nature, are consummate networkers. So you can see there's a lot of weak links here. Uh, so, so basically, uh, in, in uh, summary, the, the way you create a potent individual network is uh, that you have a mix of weak ties and strong ties, and uh, some of these are redundant, uh, and it, there, it could be rich in structural holes. For instance, you will spend a lot of time with your immediate work groups, and you'll spend a little, lot of time with your immediate social groups. But what you need to do is have a diverse mix of, of both strong and weak ties, so that you can act as a, an omnibudsman, an ambassador, if you will, to, to other departments, other social groups on campus. And what's important here is that you don't have to actually maintain these links each and every day. You just have to establish, reestablish that weak link 
on, on some periodic basis, maybe it's two weeks, maybe it's a month, maybe it's a quarter, and then let that information flow between that group and, and your group. And then uh, over time, you will, you will see this network expand. Uh, so we thought this was kind of uh, informa uh, great information for you because as an academic uh, community, you understand that science is very powerful and uh, that uh, it's, so, so what we're talking about is not just kind of an experiential thing, but it's actually uh, scientifically uh, validated with respect to our approach. So what I'd like to do is we'll switch from theory to practice, and, uh, and I'll hand it over to Gore. Thank you, Charlie. So um, Charlie gave you a great overview of the importance of this uh, from, uh, you know, so now you understand where you can play a key role. I also want to, uh, before I get into the practical aspect, uh, talk a little bit about uh, what that means in terms of your scientific or research innovations um, and why you should be networking from that perspective. Um, so the, the way we used to do science, and a little bit of introduction to myself, um, I got my PhD here at UCI some years back. I was a postdoc and then I got a job in industry and then several other jobs in industry. And in those jobs in industry, actually, I was practicing for the most part this, which was the old style of a closed innovation system where you know, we develop science and technology, we then put it into a funnel, we figure out what works, and then and that, that funnel gets narrower, and ultimately something gets developed that then hopefully is a product that hits the market. Uh, that was the old style of innovation. Uh, what has happened in the meantime is actually more and more we have this model of open innovation system. So this open innovation system is that you don't necessarily just have your own technology, but that you may be building on other people's technology. And so your build, your, the funnel now gets filled from those two areas. But not only that, that other technology may be uh, developed by somebody else to a next level, and then it comes in at various stages, um, and, and, and in some cases maybe comes out as well, because you determine that you are not the right person to commercialize this particular product, and you hand it off to somebody else, to some other, other people, or maybe there's a spin-off that creates a new market. By the way, uh, much more about this, uh, the, the name was missing there at the bottom, is uh, you can find out in Hen uh, Henry or Hank uh, Chesborough, a professor at, uh, at Berkeley that, that, uh, that uh, described this open innovation model in great detail. So you want to uh, kind of innovate by making sure that you are also con connected. So if you're at a university, you should make sure you're speaking to, uh, to co uh, corporations, that you're speaking to government uh, uh, agencies, that you're maybe getting funding to private nonprofits that are engaged in your industry, uh, as well as other individuals that may know uh, specific things in your field. So you want to connect with all of these people. Uh, that's key. And by the way, so now my next role that I have taken off the, over in the last, now coming up, eight years at UCI, first at four years at the Nano Research Facility and now at the School of Engineering, is one of research development where I work with the faculty as well as with industry on connecting and finding the opportunities and, and going out there. And so, you know, uh, thank you, Charlie, for all the kind words earlier. I was, never, I was not a, uh, a networker until much more recently. So, in other words, when I worked in companies, I wish I was a networker. I wish I had somebody to tell me about this networking thing before the last five or six years that I've been practicing it. So, uh, it basically, and the practicing, as I'll show you later, is going out there, getting out there, getting to know people, getting to know people outside of your direct area of, of expertise and knowledge, because that's where you can then uh, bring additional, uh, additional expertise in addition to the ones that you have as your base, obviously. So, um, the, uh, because as, as Charlie pointed out, in innovation, uh, the, you're, uh, you actually end up being a knowledge broker. Uh, there is another uh, professor at, at UC uh, Davis, Andy Hargadon, who, who published a book around this, uh, and I'll talk about uh, the example of Edison in a moment here, but basically knowledge brokers are those in, uh, individuals, just the weak ties is the, from the social uh, theory aspect, that, that connect people from different networks and make sure that knowledge is passed back and forth. Um, so, and, and, and the knowledge brokers, because they, you know, they have a network that they know here and what it does and, and what this one does over here, then they have unique insight into what are the opportunities for combining these two into new, new activities. So, 
Um, so example for Edison, everybody knows Edison, you know, for the light bulb. Well, you know, his patent was like number six or seven for the light bulb. It wasn't the first. He didn't invent the light bulb. What he did is he created the industry, Con Edison, Southern California Edison, and so on, that powers the light bulb. And how did he do that? Is that he knew how the, the invention portion, he, he had contacts there, obviously, but he also had people in the finance community. And then he went off and he connected with the people in the various uh, communities, uh, towns, and so on. And he made sure that those people got the buy-in from the local mayor and so on to establish a power plant locally and to put down power poles down Main Street. So they want, he made sure that, that when they created the, the, the local Edison, if you will, that, the, uh, that the, all the buy-in from everyone uh, was there. So that, so that uh, the local um, uh, authorities allowed the, you know, before it was uh, poles that had to be put down Main Street, allowed all those things. And people were afraid of electricity, you know, would it harm us and so on. So, so his innovation was basically tying these different worlds together to make it a reality. And, and similarly, by the way, um, uh, uh, Andy Hargadon analyzes Ford. Ford, his assembly line came as a result of him understanding how uh, uh, bicycle uh, people put together bicycles in somewhat of a, of a, of a uh, fashion of an assembly line, but it wasn't an assembly line, it was one person doing pieces one by one. And then there was an assembly line or a disassembly line that the meatpacking industry used. And so he actually observed how they disassembled the cow and how these guys assembled the bicycle. And I said, if I put these things to together, I can create an automotive assembly line. And so his innovation came by putting two different things together. So I urge you to think of you not only as a connector, but also as a knowledge broker, as an innovator, by bringing two different worlds together. So, um, and then lastly, before I get into the practical things, um, we are in a technology cluster. We're actually in a multiple technology cluster. Um, I just got word yesterday that, um, that uh, we have an official designation by the state of California as an innovation hub. We're one of six. I, I'm actually anxious to find out who the other six are. There are 22 that applied. Um, so uh, Octane uh, Orange County Technology Action Network uh, is, um, is leading that. Uh, but basically, we are, we are definitely in a cluster of both biomedical companies. We are here in a cluster of technology companies of various types. Specifically, you know, uh, we are probably one of the larger now concentrations of gaming, computer gaming, virtual worlds types of companies. Uh, uh, other kind of communications companies, Broadcom, Connects, and Skyworks. Um, we are in a cluster here of automotive design companies. Uh, almost every uh, uh, automotive company has a uh, kind of a design uh, center that, that is here in, in, in Orange County, or specifically even, even in Irvine. We're a cluster of uh, surf, uh, surfware, surfboard, uh, extreme games kind of uh, activities as well. So the, there's a number of clusters that are here. And so those clusters are good things for you to identify. And, and oh, by the way, uh, especially for you if you are, if you are in, in one of those areas, to identify what are the firms that, that you want to connect with in that cluster. What are maybe some of the uh, opportunities to connect with those firms? Because those clusters usually not just have the firms, but they also have the suppliers, the, the other you know, people that work there. So there may be professional organizations and other ones that you want to connect up in that cluster. So these are all opportunities for networking in that cluster. Okay, so before we get, now we're getting into the practicality. So first of all, what networking is not. It's not going to an event to ask specifically somebody immediately for help. You can do that, but that's not gonna be the most effective. What you wanna start, networking is you want to start building the relationships. So you don't want to also go to a networking event and start immediately selling. People will, will be turned off. So if you show up to the event and, 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 there's, you know, and you're a salesperson for, for a certain type of product and you're immediately telling people about this product and you want to buy it, people are going to be turned off and they're going to tune you out. Um, again, there are some appropriate networking sessions for that and there is an opportunity for you to put a plug, but if you are very forcefully doing that, you, you will get uh, get pushed back, and it's not a, a it's not a place for just immediately start asking for money or donations or or, thing, or things like that. What is networking? It's sharing of contacts and knowledge, uh, being uh, building relationships before you actually need them, uh, helping others. 
Um, there, is a, there is a theory where uh, if you help somebody, they will feel uh, kind of obligated to, to help you back. In fact, never turn down a favor that a friend wants to do you. Um, because they'll feel like, oh, he didn't, I offered help, but they didn't want my help. And so if you then, um, uh, you know, they do you a favor, then you'll do them a favor and you'll build a relationship with them. So, so if somebody offers to help you with something, take, it, take that offer. You know, even if, if it, you know, it, it, you, can, you feel like you can do it yourself, take that offer because it'll build a relationship with that person. And yes, ultimately, it is about getting, uh, getting what you need. But it is first building these other ones, seeing how you can help others, and then that way uh, building the relationship, and then and then ultimately uh, build. Okay, so practical. Uh, you're going to an event, and so the first order is to consider dress for the occasion. And I say dress for the occasion. I'm not saying dress, you know, like me today, because the event that you're going to, if if I am, uh, if everyone is in jeans and you show up like this, that's not dress for the occasion. So yeah, I'm going to stand out like a sore thumb. Um, so dress appropriately for what you feel that the that the um, that the uh, event warrants. If not sure, find out from others. Ask you know what is normal. Uh, if not sure, still uh, do a, like a business casual. You know, uh, for, for guys, you know, lose the tie, uh, uh, no jeans and things like that, no t-shirts and things like that. That usually is, is okay. Um, show up early if possible. Um, you will get to meet the organizers. Maybe you can help them out. You know, there. You know, there usually there's a flurry of activity just before the event starts. They offer to help. Maybe you can. You know, they, they'll just the offer. Even if they actually uh, say, okay, you know, we we we're, we're okay. That shows that you're you know willing to. You know, maybe they'll tell you about some other event that you that you didn't know about while you're while you're there. Um, you will um, maybe have a chance to meet the speaker now. I'm not saying that you know the speaker is getting ready for their presentation. They're they're over here, you know, getting ready, and now you're you're approaching them. Hey, I want to talk to you about this. That's not the right thing to do. But you know, often the speakers show up plenty of time. They set up their presentation and they're twiddling their thumbs because you know they 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 wanted to beat the traffic. They wanted to make sure that they that they had everything loaded, and now they're just by themselves because nobody else has showed up. What a perfect opportunity for you to connect with the speaker before. The mob hits them at the end of the of the of the presentation, which usually happens. And oh, by the way, you should you should still say hello to them at the end of their presentation, kind of reinforce the contact if you've had a chance to speak to them before. Uh, also, you get the chance to see who else has uh, who is planning to come to the event. Uh, often. Uh, uh, at, at events that, that you know that have uh, pre-registration, there will be name tags. They will be laid out on a table. Uh, sometimes they'll purposely put them away uh, so you don't see them. Uh, but often they will actually lay them out, especially at large events, so that you know you basically pick up your own uh, name tag. So you can actually browse around and see. Okay, well, who's here? Maybe there's somebody I know. Maybe there's somebody that I met before. I better remember their name, and I forgot it at the moment, and so I can look at the name tag and say, oh, yeah, I know this person. I, I'll, I'll look for them to, to show up later. Um, but also, you know, you know, you can see there's usually an affiliation, a company, and I can say, hey, you know, I, I really want to talk to this person because they're with this company, and, and you know, that would be a good contact for me. Um, and the other one is also, um, if there is a particular person, maybe you see a tag or you see or you, somebody that you want to meet, then talk to the registration people. I've done this, and I, uh, where I've said, you know, I'd really like to know this, to get to, get to meet this person. Is it possible for you to alert me when they show up? Because I don't know what they look like. And so that has worked for me, uh, where they have then introduced me to that, you know, pointed out that person, and then I went off and introduced myself. All right, so the next very important one, carry business cards. Um, so uh, first of all, make some business cards. If you don't have some, uh, make sure you have some. It's so cheap these days and you can make very nice business cards. So uh, make some business cards. Um, uh, carry them. Uh, carry lots of them. Uh, okay. <laughs> Be ready. So I have my stack of cards here. Anybody afterwards, you're welcome to take a card. Um, but. Uh, but I also want to point out for guys, this is something that I didn't even know until a couple of years ago. You know, there's a little pocket back here. <laughs> it's like, I, I actually had these jackets and I never realized that this pocket here is like a perfect thing where you can just, you know, 
while you're having the conversation, pull out your card and give it to people. Now, the other thing is to exchange them at the first opportune moment. You don't generally, so the question is, what is the opportune moment? You don't want to be too forceful, you know, hello, here's my business card, you know, that kind of thing. Although there are situations where people do write that. I mean, they, they start the, 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 the conversation and they immediately give you a business card. So, so that, that works as well. Also, be, be, be aware of, of cultural things. So if I'm, you know, if I'm meeting somebody, uh, uh, you know, uh, that's from an Asian company, the proper etiquette is to give uh, enough time. I would say also in the U.S. you should, uh, you know, not just take the card and shove it in your pocket, but, but take, take a moment to look at the card and what, what it says about the person. But especially in Asian culture, there is a way of presenting the card with two hands, uh, kind of handing it out, uh, and then the other person does the same to you with their card. And when you take their card, you take it, you read it, you kind of study it, you understand, and then maybe you ask questions. So you are uh, assistant director of corporate development at Cal IT2. What does that uh, mean? You know, things like that. So you know, do you work with uh, many Asian companies? What do you, you know? So those are the kind of questions that you can then engage. So, um, and also. Um, so the other thing is that sometimes you're in a conversation with somebody and that first opportune moment may be that you're talking to them about uh, what you do. You know, I work at UCI and, uh, oh yeah, here by the way, here's my card. Uh, uh, if you ever need a contact about, you know, you know, if you need a contact from engineering, but you know, I'll give a card to people that say, you know, oh, I, I need somebody in biology or chemistry. Okay, you know, uh, give me your card and I'll, I'll follow up with you. Um, the other thing is that uh, if you give them your card, sometimes they'll, they'll forget to give you their card because they'll just take it and that's what their uh, motivation was to get your card. And then it, it, I find that, you know, so, sometimes it's just forgetful at the moment and I would suggest that immediately just say, I'm sorry, do you have a card as well? And so just ask them for their card at the moment. And they'll say, oh yeah, yeah, excuse me, and then they'll usually pull it out. If they don't, if for some reason you, you really want their contact, what I would generally suggest is immediately take one of yours Cross out the uh, cross out your name on this one, so right, so you don't accidentally give it the way I've, I've had people uh, where where they've given me um, uh, uh, somebody else's uh, co uh, contact information. They you know uh, uh, on the back of a card that they had because what they did is they wrote it on the back of their card, uh, but they forgot to cross out the front, so so they didn't see it as they handed it to me. But in any case, cross out the front and just have them write it down. Uh, then that's of course the other reason is. Always carry a pencil or two or three, uh, so that you can so you can uh, have that information written down. And then that's the other reason to carry the pencil is that when you get their card, uh, frankly, as soon as the meeting is over, um, uh, try to uh, I try to do as much as possible of this. Sometimes I, I I do forget as well. Write down the, the date and the name of the meeting where you met this person. Maybe if if there's particular uh, reasons why you should follow up or if there's a follow up. Something that something that you need to know about this this person. So make some notes. Uh, and by the way, I've I've also been you know when somebody starts giving me a lot of information, I've actually pulled out the card and start writing down immediately. And people say, oh yeah, I do the same thing. You know, write down on the back of the card right away because because you know if you go on to the next one. Gordon, I think a, another thing is is to have kind of a an, an outgoing pocket and an ingoing pocket. Yes. <laughs> so so it's it's. So there's nothing more awkward than what Gordon says when you pull out a card and it's somebody else's card and then you, you're doing this, you know. Right, right. So, but, but sometimes if you, if you have your outgoing pocket all set up, you just reach in there and you pull it out and, and there's the card, you know, so. No, yeah, I, I agree. Either, either choose a side or, as I said, I've now uh, taken to be this my, uh, my outgoing pocket right here, the inside pocket, and then, then uh, kind of use every, all the other pockets for the outgoing ones or, or, or the incoming ones. Um, so, um, how to decide who do you approach at an event? You come to an event, you don't know anybody, you know. So, when I first started attending these events, it was like, okay, you know, I'm here. I don't know a single person here. How do I talk to them, you know? I think that's a lot of fear that a lot of people have. Well, the reality is that probably 50% of, of the people in that room are in a similar situation. Um, so, so, first of all, you know, uh, there are two possibilities. Is one is identify someone else who is also alone and start talking to them. You know, just say, hi, I'm Goran, I'm from UC Irvine, I'm with the School of Engineering, uh, what do you do? And, you know, and then they tell you a little bit about themselves and then you listen and it's a back and forth and, and you've now engaged some, somebody. And by the way, I've also found that 
you know, sometimes it's the person who's shy, who's maybe, maybe they're not, uh, you know, somebody big or important, but I've also as often found somebody who is big and important, who's off by themselves, just not recognized or not, you don't realize who they are. I was at a recent event and there were all these people about all these other people and it turns out that the big boss, the vice president of the whole division was standing by himself in the corner. And, uh, and so I walked up to him, started talking to him, and then I said to the other professors, a couple of other UCI professors, I said, you need to go talk to him. Forget the people you were just talking to. <laughs> they're, you know, they're the middle layer. The, guy, the big guy was over there in the corner. And you know, he, the, he felt probably that he didn't need to network. He was the big guy. He just came off of a red eye from, uh, or an early morning flight from Texas, and it was you know, like a mid-morning event. And, and so he was like tired, he wasn't in the mood of networking, but he was open, you know, he talked about stuff and so on. So, so be aware that sometimes the, the, the key people may actually not be the ones that are in big groups of, of already network people. Um, appro approach a group that's already talk talking, some people that are, that are together and that you maybe want to connect with. So now be careful, obviously you don't want to intrude on a conversation that's going on, but uh, because everybody is at a networking event, it's kind of expected that you are going to, you know, that you can break in. Uh, so find the opportune moment, maybe sometimes you, you stand on the side a little bit and then maybe you cut in and say, I'm sorry, can I join your group? And, and, or if, if, you, if you listen on the side and obviously if people are huddled together really closely and they, they are discussing a particular topic which, which seems that the group is kind of closing in on itself, don't, don't try to break that way. But if it's usually semi-open and by their stances and it looks like somebody else can, can come in, that's perfect. Or, by the way, also you can, um, um, uh, you can find, if you find a person that you know that's in a group that's talking, that's perfect. So, um, so if there's one person out of a larger group and you know that person, that's perfect. You go in, you say, hi, uh, Mark, how are you doing? And then, they, and then Mark, if he is the right networker, he'll turn around and say, Goran, do you know Joe and, and, and Nancy and, and Alice here? there with so-and-so company. And now you all of a sudden, you've been introduced to a number of new people. And, and it, was, it was a recommendation by somebody, uh, which is, by the way, better than introducing yourself. Um, even if that recommendation is just a, just a brief introduction. Um, and, but one thing I don't want you to do is don't, don't find your, oh, you found your lab mates and there are three of them right there and you go all <laughs> together and all of you are gonna catch up on stuff. Well, why did you come to the networking event if you're just going to catch up? I understand. We're all busy at UCI. We're always running from events to events. You don't get a chance to catch up. Um, we, uh, some time ago, we, we hosted an event with the um, AEA, or now they're called Tech America, one of the local, uh, uh, local and national organizations of technology companies and individuals. And, uh, and so they wanted to bring tech companies to meet our researchers. And we had an event at the university club for researchers to meet the, the companies. Mm -hmm. And uh, we hosted it at the university club, and there were tables all around. And guess what? There was a table of professors here, and a table of people from a company here, and a table of professors. So it wasn't just the professors who were guilty of it. The companies were just as guilty of it. And uh, so frankly, I went around and I said, OK, uh, you are with uh, this semiconductor company. There's a professor over here. You need to talk to them. And, and essentially, basically, uh, went and connected those people directly. At the Matrix Mixer that we had the other day, um, uh, uh, by the way, there is one of, this is for, for graduate students in business, engineering, uh, computer science, uh, biosciences, and now we've added the law school. Uh, so if you fall into any of those categories, please come. Uh, the next one is March, March 3rd. March 3rd. So uh, it's, on, it's on Wednesdays, it's, uh, it's once a month. There'll be another one in April and another one in, in May. Yeah. Uh, and so it's down here in Cal IT2 uh, in the atrium. So please come, it's 5.30 to 7. So, um, and, and so you get to practice all these, all these tips. Um, and the first tip is don't stand around with the other people in your school. So, so there were all these uh, business students that sat together, engineering students that sat together. There were admirably qu uh, a few that, that mingled around, but basically for the others we had to actually uh, literally break those linkages, those groups, and, and kind of have them connect with the other ones. So, um, All right, so now you met somebody, you want to have a nice, good, firm handshake. Don't, you know, don't go too firm, you don't want to break somebody's hand in the process. 
uh, also, but also don't go too limp because, mm -hmm. you know, in Western culture, uh, it is customary to have a, a firm uh, handshake. So, so not too firm, not too, too, too weak either. Look the person in the eye when they're meeting them, uh, when you're meeting them, try to repeat their name as they say it. Um, if you're not sure that you've pronounced it correctly, and given all the cultures that we have around here, repeat it and ask it, am I pronouncing that correctly? Could you pronounce it for me? That's also a good uh, way to remember their name. You know, frankly, I, I, I come to, to a lot of events and, and it's very easy to, to meet a lot of people and now how, do, how are you going to remember all the names? Especially if you're not in the, in, you know, it may be an event where business card exchange may not be appropriate. Uh, um, so you, you, the question is how do you remember those names? So by repeating them, you're actually uh, committing them to memory that way. So start by listening. Charlie pointed this out. Listen, listen, listen to, to what they are saying. So before you start telling all about yourself, because your, the way you're going to get benefit from your relationship with them is if you start listening to what they do, how they can, uh, you know, uh, how they can enhance your network and so on. And, and you're not going to find that out if you talk about all about yourself all the time. Now, uh, you'll, you do need to do that at some point, but, but first listen. Ask them what they do. Do they come to this meeting often? Maybe they're regulars at a meeting and they can tell you about this meeting. It's your first time. Lots of events, by the way, love new people and they'll say, hey, you know, any new people? And then they'll kind of put a mentor, uh, in some cases, of, an older, of a person that's regular at a meeting and, and, and put it together. Be personable. Uh, if you find something in common, maybe it's not technical. Maybe it's in, a, in, a, in the middle of a conversation you realize that both, you both like sailing or you both like um, uh, some other sports or, or, or vacationing in a particular region of the world or something. So, you know, find some common ground that builds a relationship as well. Um, uh, and then in listening what they do and so on, see if there's a problem or something that they, you know, people will also maybe, especially when they learn that you're from UCI, they'll start, oh, you know, I wonder, does UCI have this resource? Is the library available to outsiders? Is, is, is there a center for material characterization at UCI? You know, how could I, uh, you know, how does my, is there, is there a program for, for kids during the summer? And so you should say, you know, I know, or no, I don't know, but you know, let me, let me see if I can find out from somebody else at UCI. So, and you know, basically you're building that network by trying to see if you can solve the problem for them, so someday they may have solved the problem for you. And by the way, um, you never know whether the person that you're talking to who is in one business, completely unrelated to what your interest is, but it turns out that their neighbor is, is the person that you really want to talk about. So you can never know that just by starting to talk to them. But if you tell them later on what you're doing, then they'll say, oh, you know, my neighbor does that. I can put you in touch with my neighbor. So don't dismiss any contacts based on just what they do. It's the relationship with others that, that are going to uh, be also beneficial to you. So you need to start building those relationships. Okay, so then when the moment is appropriate, give you, give you a 30 seconds pitch, um, which we will be doing uh, after, as soon as we get done with this, uh, in a structured networking form. All of you, by the way, have numbers on your, on your tags, so we'll be breaking out into, into groups one through eight. We'll divide them in the rooms and also outside. Uh, there's, as I said, dessert out, so uh, what you'll do is you'll go around, we'll be in a circle, you'll form yourself in a circle, and you'll give a 30 second pitch as to who you are, uh, what your interests are, and why you came to this event. Um, uh, and actually, if you, if you have a chance, say something memorable about yourself, you know, something that people will remember you by, you know, um, uh, that, that will stand out and that they will say, hey, you know, I, uh, wasn't that the guy who, who uh, you know, there's a, there's a guy locally here, Tech Biz Connection, and he, he does the structured networking in, during their, their sessions. And so he, he ends it and says, I'm the father of uninstall. So all of you on the computers have uninstall. Well, he created the little program for uninstall many years ago. Okay? So that's a memorable thing about itself. You'll never forget the Jack Pfizer after that. Uh, he's the yeah. father of uninstall. Um, so anyway, so we'll go around that. And by the way, the structured networking is, is practiced by some organizations uh, because that's a quick way. It's like speed dating. It's like speed networking, right? So you have a whole bunch of people. You go around. And when you're done, you just 
learned ten different uh, backgrounds in in one fell swoop, and now you are you you know sometimes even you know before the thing ends everybody exchanges cards, but definitely as the thing ends now you can exchange cards with those people that you really out of those ten that you met right away maybe two of them are the real good connections, but you've 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 accelerated the process and maybe the rest of them maybe casual connections as well so so all 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 the good things so anyway. Um, so when you, why, you know, where to network, the, 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 that's the other big question. Is ask yourself what kind of meetings uh, do you currently attend and which ones would you, uh, which you, which you, should you attend? So first of all, is it's, I know it's always tough, you, everyone is busy, everybody has their own things, so we go to our own seminars and our departmental groups and so on. But you know, there's a whole listing of them at UCI, today at UCI, uh, that you can find. I'll show you the website. Uh, uh, but uh, every day there is at least six and I would say sometimes 20 or more seminars and happening on this campus and that's on a website that doesn't even carry out all of them. So if there's a particular topic you can also you know look up various centers and bound to have some seminar series that happens weekly, monthly, whatever. So expand your horizons. You know tell yourself hey you know I'm gonna go to a seminar unrelated to what I do because I just want to learn something that's over in philosophy or over in uh, engineering or over in uh, chemistry. Just, you know, expand your horizons. Um, uh, because, by the way, ultimately, in terms of scientific breakthroughs, often, as I said, not just business breakthroughs, scientific breakthroughs come when two fields meet. So if you can somehow, by accident or by design, uh, connect those dots, uh, you can, you can uh, definitely make a difference. So professional societies, so we all belong to them. I belong to the IEEE. I'm involved with the local IEEE chapter. There's one chapter on the IEEE Orange County Computer Society. So why did I get involved with them? Computer Society. I'm actually, computer is not my background. But because I wanted to make sure that our UCI professors get in front of this audience. So I went to their meetings, became there. For one year, I was actually the, the program director for the IEEE Orange County Computer Society. Um, uh, and we got, I think, four or five UCI professors in front of that IEEE Orange County uh, Computer uh, Society chapter. So, go to the national conferences. Now, all of you probably presented at national conferences and so on. Again, you tend to gravitate towards people you know, break out, learn others, go to trade shows that are that sometimes those those conferences have a show with it, but also there may be a separate trade show. Go to those mixers, meet other people. Um, there may be informal networking groups, friends from your lab, but also, you know, take up a sport, uh, take something up at ARCS, and all of a sudden you'll start networking actually with, you know, I heard that some big name people on campus go uh, exercising at ARCS on Saturday morning or Sunday morning. So, it, you know, if you can get yourself early up there, then all of a sudden, next, next thing you know, you're, you're, you're getting to network with the vice chancellor, uh, you know, so that's a pretty good thing, right? Um, um, Professional networking groups, uh, I'll talk about those in a moment here. Um, advanced networking, so now that you've, you know, that's, that's the next step, expand and diversify networks. Uh, you want to uh, connect networks. So now if you know, if you then start to really be a regular over here to some degree, again, uh, uh, over time I have uh, gotten to know quite a few networks, I have now started actually to introduce networks to networks. Um, so in other words, there is uh, the president of Orange County Technology Action Network, Octane, uh, Matthew Genocidis, and so, uh, but he was maybe not aware of some other network um, uh, uh, that, that, was, that was actually also happening here. Um, so you, you, wanna, you wanna become the referral hub in those connections. Um, and and uh, the, the saying now is it's not just who you know, but rather who, it's, who the they know that you know. So in other words, now you're connecting people uh, across different areas. So the six degrees of separation, everybody knows, uh, which brings us to, the, to social networking. So I didn't want, you know, we, Charlie and I discussed this. Social networking is good as a secondary uh, kind of enhancement. If you just spend time, all the time on social networking, then I'm not sure of the benefits. It has, it has, it has its uh, advantages in certain things. And I did Twitter this morning that I'm gonna, that I'm gonna be here at this event, and I don't know if anybody saw my Twitter. Um, uh, I, I know Guy Kawasaki follows me. I don't know if, he, if it means anything to him, but uh, uh, anyway. But Guy Kawasaki follows a whole lot of people, and a whole lot of people follow Guy Kawasaki. Uh, if you know Guy Kawasaki Garage Ventures, uh, formerly with Apple. 
Um, I would also highly recommend LinkedIn. Uh, I'll, 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 I'll show you those, those websites in a moment here. Put up a profile there, start connecting with people. That's a professional network. Obviously there's Facebook and there are people who like Facebook. Uh, uh, Facebook is, is problematic in the sense that, that people do it for, for family and personal reasons and then people also do them for professional reasons. I've also even heard of people who have created two profiles, the personal and the professional. Um, you know, uh, I don't know uh, what to tell you about that. But, but in any case, what I'm suggesting is um, uh, uh, be aware that, that if you are mixing the two, there, there, is, there is some danger in that. LinkedIn is more of a kind of a, this is my experience, this is my professional thing, career. I have actually been able to uh, reconnect with people that I've lost touch with by finding them on LinkedIn and seeing where they are today. Because they've left their jobs, their email bounced back, I didn't know where they went in the meantime, so, so this was useful in that regard. Um, uh, and then ultimately, you do want to start, once you have a large network, uh, you want to start maybe categorizing, you know, sp specific people. You do that in your mind, actually. Uh, you know, who are the people who can help you with this topic and who are the people who can help you with some other topic. And Charlie also recently found this, uh, this was featured in Economist, ResearchGate, as a, as a kind of a LinkedIn for the research community. So, so uh, I encourage you to check that out. Um, uh, finally, we'll send this out to you, uh, but these are some of the Orange County uh, networks. Octane, o uh, Orange County Technology Action Network, has a, uh, n uh, a meetings of their own, typically on Thursdays, but also run a community calendar. Uh, Techos Network, uh, Venture Network, meets every fourth Thursday of the month. SoCal Biomedical, monthly meetings between LA and Orange County. So some of these are uh, specific orientation to, to you know, technology or, or life sciences. Some of them are venture, some of them are uh, software, some of them are digital media. There are also others that are uh, more, you know, like the IEEE Computer Society. I, I, I've put up the ones that, I'm, that I know and that I have gone to events to and, or I'm a member of. Uh, I, I sit on a couple of boards here as well. But, but also, by the way, uh, don't forget the other networks. Um, so there's the British American Business Council, which is open to non-Brits. I'm not a Brit, I, I, uh, but I, I have attended their meetings and they're welcoming to others. They want to connect. Uh, with UCI, with other people. Again, you're an ambassador when you go to these networks, so keep that in mind. The Sino-American, Chinese-American Biomedical and Pharmaceutical Professionals Association, I'm actually on the board. Uh, we've been supporting from them. Again, it's a network of people that then can connect with other networks and can expand your network. So don't limit yourself. Obviously, if you come from a certain <coughs> background, that only enhances, and you may want to you, you join that network because you, uh, you feel personal affinity. Um, by the way, for those of you that, may, you know, that, that hail from other countries, the local consulates are also another way to connect with the local networks as well. So keep that in mind. They're, they're in Los Angeles, we have consulates of all the, of all the, uh, the major uh, countries as well. So, so that basically ends the presentation. Um, I, I just want to quickly show you uh, the, the, the websites, so the researchgate.net, uh, we'll send you the links to these. Uh, Octane, if you go to Octane, uh, they have a launchpad program, but the, the thing that I want to point out is the event calendar here, uh, so you can check it out. Uh, so the, uh, the events in red are their events, and then in black are all the other, other folks' events. Uh, so, and then... Um, uh, this is LinkedIn, so there's my profile, um, incomplete, uh, but I, uh, they, they've added new categories there. And by the way, I haven't uh, actively sought out connections. I've been mainly responding to other people, asking me to connect with them, and I have 360 here. So, um, so that can quickly get, uh, get very large. Um, and lastly, Twitter. So uh, there's my post from uh, earlier this morning. Uh, that, that's presenting today with Charlie at Cal IT2 on relationship building. But so, you know, there are other people and so on. I, again, I, I, you, don't, you shouldn't, by the way, don't tweet about the breakfast that you just ate and the lunch you just ate. <laughs> so, that, that's, that's not the point, because everybody's already doing that. And, uh, you know. So tweet about things that, that you can add. I, I only tweet about events I go to, meetings I, I think are going to be meaningful. And I have I had people show up at meetings because they've seen my, my tweet and said, hey, you know, that sounded like a good event, so I decided to follow uh, that. Uh, so. All right. Thank you very much. Groups. All right, so we got to everybody stand up. Okay, group one is uh, 
Uh, Randy is going to be leading group number one. Uh, no, which, which group are you? Huh? 